All right, so here we are back at the bench. Uh, what do we got here today? We got the typical triumvir and the pe penguins. Yeah, I'll put them in their uh, little sleep box. See, they, they nest. Um, <laughs> so I kind of keep them clean, sort of. I used to just leave them out, but you know, they're getting old now and starting to uh, not look fresh and crisp. <laughs> anyway, um, I got this stone out. Um, there's another, another one of these stones that I, I've had around for a little while, and um, I'm going to put it up on Etsy. Started to uh, <clears throat> sit down and give it a thoughtful evaluation. I had honed on it a few times, a bunch of times, actually. Um, you know, it's it, it's sealed. It, it, it's you know, it, it, it's not like this really special looking stone. It's it you know, some people might think it's Keta. I um, no, nah, I'm gonna call that a Sahi. You know, even though it's got like a yellowy kind of pale thing going on. Um, you can see that. Um, see how the water is soaking in like pretty quick. It's a little thirsty. Not terribly so, but it's a little thirsty. It will mellow out um, you know, once you start working on it. But um, it's a little soft, you know. Um, not soft like it's soft. It's not a soft stone. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, one of those, whatever, level two ceiling sweaters. Um, it's hard. It's pretty hard. I hesitate saying very hard. I, I'm going to say it's hard enough, you know, to, to finish your razor. Not my first choice for using Macau and Nagura, because, well, you can, I have, but you wind up getting a lot of base stone in with the slurry, and um, then there's this whole, like, seesaw thing you got going on, and, um, you know, how much base stone, how much uh, Nagura, back and forth, drives you crazy. Uh, the K, uh, yeah, my name is Keith, but the K is for coma. Uh, this is an ancient piece that I've had around for, like, ever, it came from a Togishi, and, um... Like, like a real Togishi, yes. And, uh, you know, I used to mark all my Nagura back in the day uh, with Sharpies. And then I would seal them so I know which one is which. Um, now, I could lap this off and then reseal it and everything. But I'm going to keep this one because it reminds me of those days, like, when I didn't know anything. And um, <clears throat> something i got to remember is, like, I know a lot more now, but I still need to know a lot more. Uh, there's an old saying, you know, the more you know, the less you know. Kind of like that with honing. Um, so I got this uh, Tomo out, and I was like working with it, and I was honing up this razor here. This is a uh, a lowly. What is this guy? I don't even know what this is. Um, it says Sterling. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is some sort of uh, Solingen. It is a mm, pretty hollow, but it's a very short blade, narrow blade. You know, uh, it's one of those speed demon things. And it's just like a test razor for me. Uh, and um, the fact that there's no stabilizer, you know, you come right up here too. You know, I guess you could call that a shoulder. Um, you can get like right on the stone and, you know, it's easy to home. It's simple. Um, it's a really nice blade to shave with. It's fast. Um Shaving with this is like, you know, driving a, like a British sports car, you know, down um, uh, one of those windy British roads, you know, in the countryside, that type of thing, you know. So, uh, anyway, so I got this blade out, you know, and, a, and a, you know, honing it and, um, you know, come into it here with uh my coma and make some slurry, right? And you see how like fast that that comes up, right? That's you know, <clears throat> it's a hard coma, but it, it's a pretty soft stone overall, right? And uh, the slurry here is uh, you know predominantly from uh, the base stone. You can see the coloring, and um, so you have a uh, a finishing stone, a wasedo that uh, if you're going to use, you know, Macau and Nagura, you, you're, you know, there's a challenge there because you're kicking up a lot of base stone, you get it in the mix, and you have the seesaw, like, back and forth thing that you have to uh, contend with. And, you know, for me, this stone, 
I would probably choose 99.9% .9 of the time I would choose to um, work with Tomo Slurry only you know just because I kind of feel that that's the way the stone goes um, I've done a number of progressions it works it's just extra gyration that like you see for me I don't need it I, I have multiple stones so for me to stand on my head to make a Nagura progression work on a softer stone it just you know it doesn't make sense you know, they say if it's not practical, it's not spiritual. So that's not practical for me. You know, if it was the only stone I had, it would be a different discussion, but that's not the case. So, you know, we have that. And, um, you know, it was in the course of honing, you know, I started to uh, notice a couple things about the stone. You know, the feel, you know, the feel is subtle. The, um, it, it's slick. It's slick like mud that uh, that feels like a lubricant, you know. It's got that quality to it. It's very nice. Um, it's not uh, glassy in any kind of way, but it is uh, a very f fast feel on the stone. It, it's real nice, you know. Um, let me just uh, squirt this off here. All right, I'm back. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so here I have a piece of shobu. Oop. I hate when that happens. Piece of shobu. And you can see, well, it might appear as though this is slurrying just as fast as the coma was. Uh, but it isn't. It, it's actually going slower, you know, and um, this is a softer stone than this. This should be making buku slurry very quickly on here. Well, when I say should, uh, what we have here is, is Mother Nature. You know, you have an is. You know, what it should is really what I mean to say is what would seem to make sense is that the hardest stone would make slurry faster than the softer one but that's not what happens and there's a number of reasons for that um, and none of it's really important because it doesn't make your home better like knowing the answers to everything doesn't really help your honing you know um, like knowing some answers is necessary sure you know um, I am not one to say that ignorance is bliss not at all but you know for example if you know exactly where the stone comes from does it help you hone better? No. The answer is no, it does not. All right. It may make you feel better about the stone, but it doesn't help you hone better. Um, I know. Someone's going to want to argue that. <clears throat> they can go argue with themselves. <laughs> what I'm just saying is like, you know, that expertitis that prevails on the Internet and in certain social media forums and when I say forums, I, I don't mean forums like, you know, shaving forums. I'm just talking about forums in general. <clears throat> Although, you know, I could actually be referring to those forums also. <laughs> but I'm not talking about any one specific thing. What I'm talking about is just mindset. You know, you don't have to know everything. What you have to know is, is like how to use the stone, you know. And it becomes a trial and everything, and it's like push a little harder, check the edge, push a little lighter, check the edge, try a different couple of different uh, progressions, sequences, you know, uh, different types of strokes in, you know, a different series. And you see what works, you know, because you don't know until you know, you know, and, you know, to prove that point, you, we go back to these two, all right? This should have kicked up a ton of slurry. And this actually did better. You know, so with that on the table, you know, uh, we should not pretend that we know what's going to work best on this stone for honing. We should try everything we can. We should, you know, maybe even get outside the box there. Think outside the box. I know it's a little trite, but truth, man, you know, try different things. You know, I came up long time ago with some really interesting finishing techniques that you know 
they're tremendous, you know. Um, and I got to them because <clears throat> I was willing to try things. I also applied science and some information from other areas of interest. But um, and yeah, it's finishing. So it's when I say it's tremendous, I don't mean that my edges are sharper than everyone's. You know that dick measuring stuff isn't there. I'm just talking about it being tremendous to me, and that it was a very effective and very efficient way to come up with an edge in a different way that was actually better than what I had been getting before, you know, and every time I hit a new level, then things get better. So anyway, um, I'm doing all this honing, and in the course of the honing, one of my main points of interest about this stone, and I don't know if you're going to be able to pick up on it. I'm going to try and refocus this phone. But, no, nah, I don't think you can see it. I have a photo that kind of like it's going to show it to you a little bit, but now, what I'm trying to do now is I'm, I'm rolling the bevel back and forth in the light, and I'm trying to, like, pick up on the highlight and see. Maybe you can see the reflection moving across the bevel. I'm trying to demonstrate the amount of polish, the type of polish that's on the bevel of this thing. That's on the bevel of this thing that I'm picking up from the stone. It's unusual. It's... it's JNATs inherently give you a haze, and the haze is usually not very reflective. If it is, it's slightly reflective. Th this is highly reflective, uh, the bevel here. I, I can actually, like, while I'm sitting here and I'm rolling this back and forth, and you can't see it on the camera because the camera can't resolve it. But from where I am at right now, <clears throat> I can see in the bevel right here above me, I have these bulbs. They're CFLs. They're the uh, curly type of fluorescence. I can see them. I, I can see the curls. I can see the bulb. Is a, is a mirrored reflection of those bulbs. That's unusual for this type of JNET. You know, long ago, uh, I was having a, let's call it a discussion, <laughs> with uh, someone who pitted himself as an adversary against me in the world of honing. And it, if that sounds stupid, you're correct. Um, it is stupid. Guy was a fucking moron. Still is, actually. Um, and we got into this thing with, uh, you know, mirrored polishes. And, yeah, I get mirrored polishes from some Nagura. Like, I have a Majiro in my drawer. It'll, like, put this wicked mirror polish on it. And it's not mirrored like, you know, 0.1 diamond on, a, on like, Nubuck. It, like, you would get from that application. Not like that. That's, like, crazy mirror. That's, like, perfect mirror. That's... That's more mirror than my actual mirrors, right? Um, but still, if I can, you know, uh, like those bulbs, right, that I can see in this bevel, they're, you know, a uh, good two feet, three feet above me. You know, if I can get, like, a perfect outline where I can, like, get, you know, recognition, you know, um, that's very mirror, you know, and it's unusual for a stone like this. Any JNAT, really. It's not common, you know, to uh, come up that high. You know, and you usually you wouldn't get it on the softer stone anyway. The softer stone, okay, is going to release fresh particles. As you're working, they're, they're coming up. That's because it's soft. The harder stones, you know, like this, like let's say this was a full-size stone, is going to release none, like, or maybe a few, but mostly none. Uh, fresh particles, no fresh particles. So let's just say the particle size here is X and you're working them and the particle sizes, you know, are breaking down because you're working them, but the stone is constantly, constantly releasing um, baseline size particles. So you can only get a certain amount of refinement, you know, on paper. You can only get a certain amount of refinement from that. If you just think about it logically, you know, the laws of physics are what they are, you know. If you want a finer edge, you need to find a particle. If you're constantly, constantly releasing, if you're constantly inserting coarser particles into the slurry, then you're going to inhibit your ability to refine. It's just common sense. All right? The harder stone, the particles are going to break down and break down and break down, and the slurry is just going to be so much finer than the base stone, it's not funny because the slurry is just breaking down. It doesn't have any baseline x size particles coming in. Anyway, that, that's on paper. <clears throat> razor type 
how the edge was made initially, so on and so forth. Lots of things factor in, you know. Um, how well you think you got rid of your previous scratches. I know people are, oh, take out all the scratches. If you really believe that you're taking out 100% of your scratches from the previous stone, all power to you. Uh, maybe you are, I don't know. Um, I can tell you that after looking at uh, blades, many blades, not just mine, people, <laughs> blades from all over, okay, on my scope at like really, really high magnification. I can tell you that basically, we do the best we can, but it's not a perfect job. And each each new grit has, it's not perfect. So you're going to have larger particles in it than what it's supposed to be. So if you have, for example, an AK stone and you're going to hone on it, you, you're going to have 5K particles in there. It, it's just part of life, you know? So developing the mirror here on the stone is very special because I have a stone that's releasing particles at, at base size, you know, X size into the slurry all the time, you know, and um, I'm still able to get, you know, the polish. What is the polish? Polish is scratching. It becomes polish. It becomes a mirror when the scratches are very narrow and they're very close together, okay? You know, if you study polishing, that's exactly what happens. Then you have the angle of incident with light, and you get the reflection, and so on and so forth. Okay, there's a little bit of science in there, a little bit of optics, so on and so forth. Um, it's not really that important for the sake of discussion, but the basic principle is narrow scratches close together, higher polish. There you go. All right. So, you know, what happens? Uh, like, how do I get that polish on this? And, you know, <clears throat> and sometimes I don't even get it on harder ones, but you know you have to remember it's like you know you're talking about a particle and it's going to scratch the steel. So if you think of the particle as maybe like a pyramid, all right. So maybe you're only scratching with the very tip of the pyramid, as opposed to if you you know have more pressure or maybe the point of the pyramid is actually a little bit sharper, a little bit pointier. It's digging in a little bit more, so more of the pyramid gets up into the steel. You know, so if you have a deeper, wider groove, and many of them, it won't be as mirror-like as you would get from something that uh, is um, very fine, very narrow, and very close together. You know, that's just the way it goes. So anyway, um, just, just a little bit about the stone. I thought it was interesting. It's, um, it's not that I've never had a stone like this before. I, I, I actually have a similar type of thing going on with one of my regular stones, but I, I just want to touch base on it and talk about it. It's it's good to, I think, um, <laughs> hoping <laughs> that people like to hear, like, you know, these explanations about, like, what goes on in the world of, like, JNATs and stuff. Like, what are the qualities? What are they all about? And, you know, how definitive are they? How set in stone are they? You know, people talk about, you know, stones by brand and i would wish people would get away from the brand it's all nice to say you have nakiyama and everyone loves to say nakiyama but you know there are nakiyama that are not as good as like great ozuko or uh, narutaki makoto or something like that you have to look into the stones you know actual performance into its its true assets and like what's there and um you know, I, I keep an open mind. You know, I'll say it repeatedly. A harder stone is really my best friend. That's what I go for. But this is a great stone, you know. And uh, another thing to remember is that, you know, I love the edges from this. They're, they're very sharp and they're super, super smooth. But they're completely different. They're not laser edges like I normally make off of my hardest stones. And that's okay. Not, I don't need to have the exact same edge all the time. I don't use the, the same coma all the time. I don't use the same tomo all the time. A variety is the spice of life, as they say, and I like to mix and match. So as long as I'm shaving good, I'm good. You know, I, I, I'm not here to measure my dick uh, against uh, somebody else's shaving claims or what they think is the best edge or who, you know... I, I read things. Oh, this guy, he owns better. Or uh, the, that guy, he, he doesn't have as smooth an edge. And they, they, they break it down like to the nth degree. It's almost like they, they have an Excel spreadsheet or something going on that they're referring to. And I, I just think that's totally off the beam. It's like, to me, that's got nothing to do with happiness, you know? That's just being like... To me, most of that, it just seems like, you know, people are just trying to be argumentative douchebags, you know. 
like really like <laughs> why are we trying to put somebody's edge into a like a top 10 list or something i don't know where the hell that crap comes from i really don't you know are you shaving good How, how's your edge how, how are you shaving tell me about that will you please tell me about that i want to know how you're shaving that that's what's important I'll, I'll tell you something i shaved great you know um i shaved today my skin feels freaking wonderful all right is a good razor this is a great stone i got a fantastic edge you know anything else ah please <clears throat> not into it anyway just want to touch base on these things and talk about them a little bit and um you know, I'm hoping everybody's having a great summer and everybody's like, you know, having some happy honing times, even though it's a little hot out. Um, but whatever, whatever you're doing, you know, just remember one thing everyone should always remember, you know, honing the straight razor thing. This is about having fun, you know, avoid the people who are like just constantly miserable and complaining about everybody. Avoid those people. They'll bring you down, you know, head to the light, always head to the light. <laughs> You know, be happy, you know. Anyway, uh, honing is about having fun. So remember, everyone, always have fun. Take care. Talk to you soon.